Hey boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math. Today we are going to be talking about dot plots and data distribution. Okay, Our essential question, or what I want you to know by the end of this video, is how can you summarize and display numeric data? Okay, And we're going to use dot plots as a means to get there. That would be the summary and the display. So first thing I want to talk about is, is statistical questions. Okay. It says the question, how much does a typical cat weigh, is an example of a statistical question. And a statistical question is a question that has many different or variable answers. Okay, so we're going to look at this little example I have here and determine whether or not these are going to be statistical questions. So um, in the questions on the video, right before I give you the answer, I'm going to pause the video and, and you're going to answer whether you think it's a statistical question or not. Okay. So um, your sister wants to know the typical weight for an adult cat. Is this a statistical question? Yes or no. Number two, you want to know how tall your friend is. Is that a statistical question? Yes or no. You want to know how far your house is from school. Is that a statistical question? A car owner wants to know how much money people will uh, usually pay for a new tire. And then finally, how many students were in line for lunch at the cafeteria today at 1230? Okay, all right, so let's talk about each one. Number one, your sister wants to know the typical weight for an adult cat. All right, when we're talking about typical, that's when we're talking about averages. All right, you may have a cat, if you do, it could weigh seven, eight pounds. I had an adult cat that weighed 25 pounds, okay? And I'm sure there's there's weights everywhere in between, okay? So that is definitely a statistical question. We will, we will say, I'll put an S for statistical. Uh, I'm writing in white, can't do that. All right, statistical, S. All right, you want to know how tall your friend is. Well, you it's only saying one friend, so they can only have one height. So that is a non-statistical question. You want to know how far your house is from the school. Well, your house is, is not moving, so no, that is not going to give you a variable amount of answers. You'll only have one. Okay, uh, it says your a car owner wants to know how much, how much money people usually pay for a new tire. Well, it depends on the tire, so yeah, you're going to definitely get some different answers there. So that's definitely a statistical question. And then finally, how many students were in line for lunch at the cafeteria today at 1230? Well, guess what? That is not a statistical question because there's a, there's a certain number of people that are in line at 1230. Okay. So, you know, those are examples of statistical and non-statistical questions. All right. So we can take some of this data that is a statistical question and we can, we can display it in what we can call a dot plot. And that gives us a visual on how the data is, is spread out. Okay, so let's look at this up here. It says, making a dot plot. Statistical questions are answered by collecting and analyzing data. All right, one way to understand a set of data is to make a visual display. A dot plot is a visual display in which each piece of data is represented by a dot above a number line. The dot plot shows the frequency for each data value. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of what this looks like. And so I'm going to make my pen a little bit fatter here. Hopefully that'll work. All right, so we have an example that says a baseball team manager records the number of runs scored by the team in each game for several weeks. All right, use the data to make a dot plot. So all you do is, first of all, you have your data here, okay, and you have your, your line, uh, your number line right here. So for each value of your data, you're just going to put a dot over the number line. Okay, so let me show you. So the first one, I have one. So I go up to one, and I put a dot. And I'm going to cross that one out. And then I have a three. So for three, I'm going to put a dot, cross that line out. I have a one again, cross do it but now you can get a visual on the distribution of that data and you can look at this data and say okay my data is distributed kind of like that okay which if it wasn't for this little number over here 
you would have a pretty uniform distribution. Okay, this this 11 that we have is what we call an outlier. All right, because it's kind of away. It's much more than the rest of the um, the data, and we're going to talk about that in the next slide. But that's all you have to do to plot a um, a dot plot. Okay, you just take the numbers in your data, put them on the graph. All right, didn't want to do that. So now let's talk about interpreting your dot plot. Okay, what is what does a dot plot actually mean? All right, so um, let's talk about this really quickly. All right, so I have um, two dot plots here. I'm going to get back out of this this big one and go back to a small ink. All right, so I have these two dot plots. Well, first of all, let's read the instructions. It says a dot plot can give you a visual uh, picture of spread, center, and shape of a data distribution. You can describe the spread of data by identifying the least and greatest values. Okay, so that's the spread. That's also your range. All right, you can look for outliers, which I just mentioned on the last slide, which are data values that are either much greater or much less than the other data values. And these outliers can have an effect on, on these, these data values. Okay, then it says you can uh, describe the center and shape of a data set in terms of peaks, clusters, or symmetry. All right, and in symmetry, a symmetric distribution has approximately the same number of data values on either side of the center. Okay. So looking at this first one here, this first thing, all right, uh, we'll notice that the data values are spread out from three up to seven, okay? And there aren't any outliers. There's nothing over here and there's nothing over here. So this is a pretty uniform distribution, okay? It says the data has a uh, cluster um, from three to seven, and they're all kind of grouped together here. And it says it has one peak at five which is right here this is where most of your data sits at five so i can almost bet that this is going to be five is going to be your median of the data all right and so that's also the center of the distribution that's your peak all right and it says that the distribution is symmetric if we drew a little little graph you'd have from the peak over here you'd have the same kind of drop as you would from here to here all right so it is a symmetrical distribution um this one however all right ranges from one to what looks like nine okay with everything kind of clustered from six to nine and we have this one little outlier over here at one okay the the um the data has a cluster from six to nine with one peak at nine right here all right which is at the end of the of the cluster so it's not the center like it was over here okay so that kind of tells us something else about the data um it's it's also the greatest value because I told you that the range was from from one to nine and the, and the, the peak is at the nine all right so it's not symmetric and it's kind of clustered at the the peak is kind of clustered at the end of the distribution so that's the main differences between the two types of uh, of dot plots you'll see so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and make us our own well not really make our own dot plot I showed you how to make a dot plot but how to um, how to get units of measure Okay, so in this particular thing, we got a dot plot that shows the number of runs scored by the baseball team uh, for several weeks. This is from example, the first example that I did. Okay, this is what the dot plot I just made look like. So it says find the mean, median, and range of the data. All right, so that's a pretty easy thing. The first thing I want to do, because this is all in order. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is find the, um, the range. Okay, so I'm going to say the range. is the smallest number which is 0 to the biggest number which is which is 11 and then subtract the smallest number from the biggest number so the range is 11 all right that was the easiest thing we could do next thing i want to do is i can find the median okay let me i'm going to count how many pieces of data there are there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 so it's an odd number so that means i'm going to have a number specifically in the middle all right, so um, to get to the middle number, all right, half of, of 19, well, I don't want to do half of 19. I want to kind of drop that, that, that odd number off and think of 18 and say, okay, I want to go to 9. And then my 10th place is going to be, from either direction, is going to be my middle number. So I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, so 2 is going to be my median. I hope you saw what I did there. 
All right, I just I just figured out what my middle number was by counting the number of data that I had and then just taking half of it and counting to that number. Okay, so that number was two. My median was two. All right, what about the mean? What about the mean? We have to we have to add all right all these numbers up. So if I add all these numbers up, I mean, and I can I can do it like this. I can say, all right, I have how many pieces of data? I got 19 pieces of data. What's it going to equal? Oops, I can't write here. The pen's kind of acting wonky. All right, so I have I have zero times one, and I'm going to add that to one times three, and I'm going to add that to two times, how many were there? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm going to add that to three. What I wind up with is 61 over 19. So now I just divide. And that's going to give me a mean of 3.2. All right, so my mean of the data is 3.2. And I have a sneaky suspicion that that outlier right there is the reason why my mean is higher than my median. Okay, because clearly we scored a lot more two-run games than we did anything else. So um, the median is 2, and we got the range, and, and that's pretty much it. So what you have to do now is just kind of identify what's going on here. So we have a range of 11, all right? Um, our, we, we, we scored uh, a range of 11 different scores, or, or around there. Um, the median is 2, so on, on average, the median score was, was 2 runs per game. But the mean was 3.2. So that just tells me that that, that outlier, all right, and I'm going to write that on here. This is an outlier, outlier, okay? That is pulling, all right, the median towards it. Or not the median, but the mean. All right. If I figured out what this was without the outlier, if I took, if I took that off, no, that's not the outlier. That's a seven. Hold on, let me back up here. If I took the outlier off, and then added it up and divided, I'd have um, fifty divided by nineteen. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. What's fifty divided by nineteen? Maybe I'll answer, ask that in a question. That'll be the new new question to end this thing. All right. So fifty divided by nineteen is 2.6 which is a lot closer to the median all right so that makes a lot more sense that 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 one game right there really caused an issue all right but anyway that's how you um, find measures from a dot plot that's how you create a dot plot that's how you interpret a dot plot so all those things are what you what you'd learn from this video if you didn't learn it you need to go back and watch this again